All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Chem. I am your host and the author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. This is episode 10. So we are finally up into the double digits here on the land of Chem. And slowly but surely, it seems like this is turning into a legitimate YouTube channel. Um, we have finally reached officially over 100 subscribers here on the Land of Chem YouTube channel. It is the coolest thing and it means absolutely the world to me. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you everyone so much to everyone that has watched these videos, liked the videos, subscribed to the channel. Um, it's just the coolest thing in the world to see this channel start growing. So nonetheless, back to the topic at hand, episode 10, the Egyptian pyramid pump shaft. So in today's video, this is going to be a bit more technical than some of the previous episodes. And we are going to begin to dive into the specific details regarding the operation of the Egyptian pyramids. So without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. I also have some new merch available. There's t-shirts, v-necks, hoodies, whole bunch of different merch options. So if you go to the website and scroll down on the homepage to the merch section, you can click on the link. It'll take you to the shop and you can pick up your t-shirts. Uh, and for everyone that's interested, if you want to show me some love and help to support this project and help to support the channel, just go to www.thelandofchem.com, pick up your copy of the book, and uh, I thank you all so much in advance. All right, the topic for today's video, the Egyptian pyramid pump shafts. So today I'll be discussing three different structures, the Red Pyramid, the Bent Pyramid, and the Great Pyramid of Giza. If you want a thorough explanation as to how each one of these structures operated, I recommend you pick up your copy of the book, and then you can come back to the Land of Chem YouTube channel to check out the videos that I've already posted on the function of the Red Pyramid and the function of the Bent Pyramid, and I do promise in the future to do a full video explaining exactly how the Great Pyramid of Giza operated. But again, for today, we are going to be focusing on the component that is, with few exceptions, found on the northern side of every Egyptian pyramid. And you will see these pump shafts descending from the northern face of the pyramid down into the structure, again, with a few exceptions. In today's video, we're gonna start with the Red Pyramid. When I began to develop the theory for the land of Chem, I started to evaluate each component of the Egyptian pyramids as an individual unit of a chemical manufacturing process. So what does that mean? So a chemical manufacturing process unit means the equipment assembled and connected by pipes or ducts to process raw materials and to manufacture an intended product. So after my first visit inside the Red Pyramid of Dashur, I came up with the idea that that pyramid was designed to manufacture ammonia. So I knew that the chambers themselves were an integral part of this Egyptian pyramid chemical manufacturing process and the chambers were the reactors, right? This is where the chemicals were being produced. So I had been inside the chambers of the Red Pyramid, seen the chemical staining on the walls. I smelled the intense smell of ammonia emanating from the third and final synthesis chamber. And I was beginning to understand how these chambers had been engineered with progressively reduced volume toward the apex of the chamber. And this section was designed to increase the temperature and pressure of gases to facilitate these chemical reactions. So I was beginning to understand how the chambers slash reactors operated. However, I had no idea how the reactions were moved through the structure. And then I gradually began to realize that one of the critical components of each Egyptian pyramid was the Northern pump shaft. So specifically in regard to the function of the red pyramid, I began to envision this structure being filled with water. So for now, let's just picture it in our mind's eye. And for those of you that make it to the end of the video, I may have something very, very special coming up at the end, but for now, we're just gonna do a little teaser. Okay, so again, picture in your mind's eye that these first and second chambers are going to begin being filled with water. So the water level is gonna rise in these chambers, and it is also going to rise into your pump shaft. And I knew that the water level within the first and second chambers would only equal 
the height of the water level within the exterior reservoir. So I had two important questions. A, how did the water level get compressed into the upper portion of the vault? Second, how did you move the water from this second chamber all the way into the top of this third chamber? And again, it dawned on me, the function of the Egyptian pyramid pump shaft. So again, let's envision that these first two chambers are filled with water. This pump shaft is also going to be filled with water. So a stone block was inserted into this northern pump shaft. As that block descended into the bottom of the pump shaft, it compressed the water within these chambers into the upper portion of the vault, and it also moved the water into this third and final chamber. And as your northern pump shaft is filled with water, as the stone block moves down this shaft, it is also going to compress the water all the way up into the upper vault of this final synthesis chamber. So that is the function of the northern pump shaft within the Red Pyramid. And here are just a couple of quick pictures showing the pump shaft of the Red Pyramid. So this picture is from about halfway down the shaft, looking up towards the daylight. This next one is about halfway down the shaft, looking down into the first chamber. And this third one is a picture of the termination of the shaft leading into the first chamber. And I'm just gonna leave this up here for one or two seconds so that you can wrap your head around some of the unusual details at the bottom of this pump shaft. All right, now, so here we are at the Bent Pyramid and within this structure, the same theory and methodology applies for the utilization of the pump shafts to move reactions throughout the structure. So for this lower chamber system, let's just envision as we did with the red pyramid, the system being filled with water. So at the bent pyramid, you also have an exterior reservoir surrounding the structure. And your lower system is a subterranean system below ground. So you can very easily fill this entire system with water. Once you have filled this lower system with water, if you insert your stone block into your pump shaft, it is going to compress the liquid and push it into your upper system, okay? So that is the function of the pump shaft on the north side of the bent pyramid. So now we have a partially filled upper primary reaction chamber within the bent pyramid. However, at this point, the water level within this chamber will only ever reach the height of the water level in the exterior reservoir. How do you get the water to reach the top of this upper vault? Well, this is when you will simultaneously activate both your northern and western pump shaft. So again, let's envision this entire system being filled with water. So the exterior reservoir is surrounding the structure. The water is gonna flow into the structure, filling your lowest separation chamber. It's gonna start filling your upper separation chamber. It will begin to fill the connecting shaft and fill your upper primary reaction chamber. So at this point, you will insert your stone block into the northern pump shaft. It is going to compress the liquid into your upper system. And you can then insert the stone block into the western pump shaft, compressing the entire reaction into the upper vault of the primary reaction chamber. And this is just a quick picture showing the pump shaft of the bent pyramid. And here is another very interesting diagram showing the interior components of the bent pyramid. And you can see this pump shaft on the northern side of the structure leading into your lower separation chambers. And then your pump shaft here on the western side of the structure, which was utilized to manipulate the water level in your upper primary reaction chamber. All right, and moving right along to the Great Pyramid of Giza. So step number one, again, let's picture the external reservoir surrounding the structure. This reservoir is gonna be filled with water and the water within the reservoir is gonna be utilized to fill the subterranean chamber. So again, picture in your mind, the subterranean chamber being filled with water. That water is also going to fill into your northern descending pump shaft. So imagine if you were to insert a stone block into this pump shaft and allow it to descend all the way toward the subterranean chamber, it is going to compress and pump 
all of the water from the subterranean chamber up through this well shaft and it will begin to fill the interior chambers of the Great Pyramid. And just a couple of quick pictures of this pump shaft descending into the subterranean chamber. So you can see here on the left, the pump shaft looking up toward the daylight, and here on the right, the pump shaft descending into that subterranean chamber. And of course, in regard to the Great Pyramid, the big mystery is what happens to or with the water once it has been pumped from the subterranean chamber into the inner components of the structure. And I guess that's just gonna have to be a video for another time. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this point, I'm going to insert something that I've been working on for a very, very long time and something that I'm overwhelmingly excited about. Before I do so, I wanna give a huge thank you to Alan from the Sacred Geometry Decoded channel. He made this and in doing so, helped bring my vision to life. Alan, thank you so much for taking the time to work with me on this little project. It came out better than I ever could have imagined and it just means the world to me. Thank you so much. So I'm also not gonna give any explanation about what this is, but I do promise in the future to do a video with a full in-depth explanation, providing all of the details that you'll need to fully understand. So without further ado, All right, everyone, I hope that you enjoyed watching that as much as we enjoyed making it. Alan, again, thank you so much. Uh, I won't spoil the surprise to the people, but I will say Alan and I have something else in the works that uh, we've been talking about doing for a very long time that I think everyone is going to enjoy. So let me just say, Alan, I look forward to working with you again soon in the future. And just a quick reminder that limited first edition print copies of The Land of Chem are now available at www.thelandofchem.com. Again, if you want to show your boy some love, visit the website, pick up your copy of the book, buy a t-shirt. It means the world to me. So thank you all so much in advance. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are at the end of the video. I just want to say thank you so much. It is literally because of you that all of this is happening. A hundred subscribers, a couple of the videos have almost 500 views here on the channel. Um, my Instagram is growing and growing. We get new followers every day. Um, again, it just means the world to me that you guys are interested in this material. And if you're interested, please share it with your friends and help get this out there. So if you haven't already, like the video, subscribe to the Land of Chem YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram at the Land of Chem. You can pick up your copy of the book at www.thelandofchem.com. I think that's it for today. So with nothing else, we'll see you next time.